Good evening and welcome to our midweek reflections from St Andrew's Round Hay United Reformed Church on Wednesday the 23rd of December. It's the eve before Christmas Eve and this will be our last reflections from St Andrew's for Advent this year, indeed for 2020, because we're taking a break next year. But tonight, as I've already said over the past few weeks, perhaps what I miss most from our build-up to Christmas during Advent this year is being able to sing carols with my friends and family from St Andrews. And I want to think about another carol this evening. But before I come to that, I want to share a Gospel reading from Matthew's Gospel that was also used in the United Reformed Church Daily Devotions online today. And I'm going to entitle this uh, short passage from Matthew's Gospel, In Bleak Bethlehem, which may give you a clue as to the carol that I'm going to share later on. So I'm reading from Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the prophet had spoken. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. Now when Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Now Bethlehem was probably heaving and it was, the number of people in it would have been growing, it would have been an uncomfortable and un overcrowded place. But imagine it above all else as a real place, maybe like the place where you live, uh, in the city where you live. Imagine it as a real place where life struggles as it does today and as it has done for many of us over this past year with not just the threat of coronavirus that's been hanging over all of us and especially all that we've had thrown at us in this last week but all the other stuff that we have to deal with um, because everything hasn't been put on hold this year of course with all that people have had to deal with People still have to deal with other illnesses, whether it be cancer or ongoing illnesses that they've had. People still have to deal with with uh, all sorts of issues to do with work or lack of it. People still have to deal with poverty. But in that passage, despite the difficulties that that couple had to deal with, Joseph had his struggles, Mary had hers, and they had all sorts of relationship issues, of course, to sort out. But God's angel messengers told each of them not to be afraid. So they trusted God. They trusted God. And into that context, I want to read you a poem. Yes, a poem, not a carol. Uh, it is called A Christmas Carol not to be confused with a certain Charles Dickens one, which I mentioned two weeks ago. As soon as I start reading it, you'll recognise it, um, because you'll know it better as a song. 
In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron. Water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Enough for him whom cherubim worshipped night and day. A breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall down before. The ox and ass and camel, which adore. Angels and archangels may have gathered there. Cherubim and seraphim thronged the air. But only his mother, in her maiden bliss, worshipped the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Give my heart. Now I have to admit that Carol by Christina Rossetti is actually one of my absolute favourite Christian hymns ever. Maybe it has something to do with it not having been written as a carol. Christina Rossetti herself was one of the most important female poets of the 19th century. Born in London to Italian parents, she came from a poetic and artistic family. Perhaps the most well-known of her family members was her brother, the artist Dante. And yet Christina herself is particularly remembered for surrounding her life or building her, her life up um, and immersing herself and her poetry in that which is termed as the pre-Raphaelite movement. As well as the arts, her family were passionate also about politics and religion. And there is a strong sense of this conflict between the worldly and the heavenly in much of her writing. It's said that her influence on the world around her might have been much greater had she not been born at a time when the voices of women poets and authors were silenced. Yet she paved the way for many women who came after her. So great was her influence that at one stage she was even seriously considered for Poet Laureate. The themes of her writing dealt with the gap between rich and poor, the injustices she saw happening all around her, and her desire for a fairer society. Of course, these are themes we've heard echoed in 2020, perhaps more than ever, through the need uh, and the increasing draw on food banks that we've seen this past year, the issues over free school meals, the whole campaign surrounding Black Lives Matter, amongst many, many other themes that have come or risen even more to the surface because of the situation we've been in over this past year. Although all these themes, or many of these themes, were, were always present in Rossetti's writing, with the passing of time, it's thought that her focus became more and more spiritual. So in her poem, In the Bleak Midwinter, it's one that is thought to have been written in her later years, but it actually wasn't published until 1906, after her death. And even then it wasn't pu um, published as a poem. But it was set to music, music written by uh, an English composer, a certain Gustav Holst. As a carol, of course, I'm not the only one who holds it in high regard. 
it is reckoned to be one of the most atmospheric and moving Christmas carols of all time. Back in 2008, uh, a setting of this carol by another English composer, Harold Dark, was voted to be the best carol according to the BBC Music Magazine, and I dare say it's been voted best carol many times uh, since. The carol not only sets the Christmas scene in a beautifully descriptive way, but has been said to be a complete guide to the Christian faith at Christmas time. Now, if you're able uh, to find the words, then take a look at them now, because they are beautiful. In the first verse, we begin with picturing the circumstances of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. In the second verse, Rossetti contrasts the whole idea of the incarnation with the time when Christ will come again. And all of this being part of a great cosmic plan. She also highlights the poverty into which this child will be born. The third verse bounces off the first, and we see a contrast between the cold harshness of the weather and the world outside, and then the warmth and protection of Mary, his mother, and the stable itself. And then in the fourth verse, we see highlights of Mary's affection for her godchild, whilst the angels rightly celebrate that which only she, a mother, could give. Here is the love of a mother, which is both natural and genuine. The final verse draws on Rossetti's own challenging past, as she challenges us to show our faith by reflecting ourselves in our care for others. And again, here is a message we need this year more than ever. So, is this the best Christmas carol ever? Well, some might say it's a depressing uh, and bit of an old Victorian dirge, but to many others, including me, in the bleak midwinter, with music by Gustav Holst and words, wonderful words, by the poet, poet Christina Rossetti, make it the perfect Christmas carol. And I'm gutted not to be singing it in church this year. It's atmospheric. The theology, the God stuff, the God words are so effective and tangible because it is placed alongside the harsh reality of this world. It's not made up. It's not cute like some carols or Christmas songs. It's not banal. It's not like a Christmas card pastiche or picture. It makes us think. Think of those who live in poverty and those who are struggling. It makes us think about those with little else but love and hope to sustain them. This is the message of Jesus at Christmas, and it's all you need to hear. I want to finish with a prayer, uh, which is actually a prayer for Christmas Eve, but seeing as we're on the eve of Christmas Eve, uh, I think we can get away with it. Um, and it's from uh, a book by the Wild Goose Resource Group called Candles and Conifers. So let us pray. Bright holy God, you come among us. You fill us with awe and wonder. You welcome our stories and our prayers. So we pray for peace. Peace in places where there is anger and war and fear. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers, for rulers, for politicians, for fighters, for older people and children, for all who are caught up in conflict, in bitterness and danger. We pray for peace with integrity and with justice. We pray for those tonight who are 
traveling or who are stuck away from home, we particularly think of those waiting to cross the English Channel. We pray for those longing to travel home for Christmas. For those who are traveling because they have no place or no shelter they can call their own. So we pray for those whose home is on the road or on the street. We pray for children who will be born this Christmas time. We pray for those who have been born during this past year, remembering that they will have been born during a time of global pandemic. We pray for them and their families, and we ask for your blessing, Lord, on their lives. We pray for all who are sick, those who are struggling with coronavirus and all the other illnesses that people have to face at these times. We pray for those who care for them. We give thanks for our National Health Service and for all the supporting services and those who have provided, provided essential services for us this year. And we pray for those who have died, for those we miss at our table, for those we can't be with this year. Lord, tell those who have gone before us how much we love them and miss them, and tell them we carry their stories in our lives. We pray for ourselves, for our needs, as this Advent season moves towards Christmas. We pray for our worries, for our hopes and our dreams. Emmanuel, God with us, heaven come down to earth, help us in these coming days to listen to the angels and not to be afraid of you, of your weakness or your glory. Come, holy, helpless Jesus, come into our lives with joy. Amen. Amen. Good night. God bless. And if I don't see you again before Christmas, I hope you have a really blessed Christmas.